Ordinarily, I would have at this juncture uh, created a beautiful, uh, wordy introduction for a guest, but sub subconsciously I didn't bother to do it for this guest, and I suppose it's because I've known him for a long time, man and boy. Uh, for at least the last ten years, we used to work together at another radio station and he used to produce little packages for me, and I used to see him through the glass, and we'd just grumble about stuff. Now he's an international star. Sitting opposite me is Carl Pilkington. Good morning, Carl. All right, Sean. How's it going? It's going all right. I'm, I'm sorry about the lack of introduction. It's all right. That was good. It, it turned out to be an introduction, didn't it? Yeah. I suppose. It'll be Monday when you hear this, listeners. But currently it's Friday, because Carl's schedule is such that we can't get him live. It's impossible. No, I wanted to come in live. No, it's daft, no, this. Don't because now I'm here out. to tell you about a programme that was on on Friday night. Yeah, but it'll be on next Friday night as well, won't it? Oh, yeah, but you want the main... what? You want know, the first episode. I know, I know. But you came come, in a bit I late. I Father Christmas in January. <laughs> Missed the boat a bit. But there's something to look forward to then. But it, it is your birthday today, the 23rd of September, when we're actually doing this. It's your birthday, 39 times around the sun. How do you, f how do you approach birthdays? How does it make you feel? It's just closer to death. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I don't celebrate it, never have done. Um, even when you were 18 and stuff? Even when I was... Uh, the, the only... I remember... Is it 13, the big one? Well, when you, it's, uh, that's when you have the bar mitts for it, but you're not Jewish. No. That's the only time when I got a cake. And no one bought it me. My mum sort of gave me a pound and said, nip to you phase and get yourself a cake <laughs> for your birthday. And I just remember thinking, is this it? Is this, is this uh, as good as it gets, is it? And I've <laughs> never... I, I don't know if that's why I don't celebrate them. I've never gone out sort of on a birthday night and let's celebrate my birthday. It seems I'm not interested because because we've got two little ones now, and it, we, we, there's the it's the cult of the child now. Even as a, a two year old or a three year old or a four year old, you've got to have a massive party. You've got to uh, have at least thirty or forty kids. Everybody's got to have a party bag, and you know what else they do at, at children's parties, which I instinctively know you won't uh, agree with. You know, pass the parcel. Yeah. Every layer, there's a little prize, so nobody so gets nobody upset. Nobody loses. Is that? I mean, is that right or is that wrong, Carl? Well, what's the game then? Well, exactly. What's the point? Because the original Pastor Parcel is teaching kids about life, that sometimes you, sometimes you can't you win, win them all. Sometimes you don't. Exactly. But not anymore. But Everybody they, wins now. But they've stopped what's it as well, haven't they, in some places? Um, Mother's Day, because of orphans. Well, I mean, it's getting a bit ridiculous. Honestly. I, this, this is the thing. Do you know, like, oh, getting closer to death, I'm getting older. It, in a way, I'll be glad to get out <laughs> of this planet. I've been around the world, and it just annoys me. The more you see, the more you find out. Little tidbits like that that you've yeah, told me, yeah. it just annoys me. No. I did, well, I mean, I, I, I want to, before we get to uh, An Idiot Abroad, which we've got to, of course, because this is what we're on about, but we, we've got to talk a little bit about childhood whilst we're here, because there's a thing called, um, uh, I think it's called uh, Pilkopedia on the internet, which is like a sort of special version of Wikipedia, which is all about you. And it comes up with some lovely little gems. One year, Cal participated in his school's Christmas production. He was playing the drums and had to wear a little hat. Whilst sat at his drums, he started playing along to Little Donkey, although he wasn't supposed to, and the crowd went wild. Do you remember that? Yeah, it's like, this is like, this is your life. Yeah. Yeah, That's I do remember that, yeah. Does, is that. Was that one of the moments, do you think, that subconsciously fed your need and desire, your desperate need and desire to be recognised and to be in the public eye? No, because no. I think there was more things that put me in the position of... You see, I really like radio, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. The good thing with radio is you can sit in a room, empty your head yeah. to uh, whoever wants to listen to it, you sat on your own, you've got no one interrupting you, yeah. moan all you like. I mean, yeah. that's what I did. did an overnight show, 2 till 6am. And it was just the moan, just moaning. <laughs> and I'd empty my head, and then I'd go home, and those who wanted to listen to it listened to it, mm. and then, then, you know, before that I had CB. CB. So I don't like you? being in front of a crowd. No. I hate that, honestly. Yeah. In America, on this trip, on this series, Ricky had set me up to be in Glee. No way. So honestly. We can see this in, in, on an idiot abroad, this, be, this yeah, series. It yeah. only in the UK, when it goes out in America, we're not allowed to put it out because Van Halen's not happy. <laughs> he do it. I'm <laughs> singing Van Halen jump. <laughs> he said it's shocking, yeah, he do not want it out. Put it out in America. So, um, so that's got, I've got to put something else there. <laughs> but it's the most embarrassing thing. Honestly, I cannot watch it. I'm not messing about. Yeah. Do you know what? You, you get like a sweat on. Yeah. When you're seeing yourself do something, you go, I can't believe. Yeah. It, honestly. So it it's really the does... the most embarrassing thing. And it's, in a way, it's like me doing the drums in Little Donkey. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was an uncomfortable moment. Really it wasn't uncomfortable. I'd finally found myself. It's not even funny, though. No. I said to Ricky, I said, I'm not happy with that, because it's not actually, it's just awkward. Right. 
It's and not it, really what. Yeah, I, can, I can't wait to see it. Horrible. Though. Nonetheless. And that's in the same program where where I was invited to a cuddle party. Now that sounds cringy, doesn't it? Well, what what worries me is is that is the implication of a cuddle party is that it sounds especially in America. Was this in the is this in the west west coast America? So I just just I think I, I drove off from Los Angeles. Yeah. It must have been about I don't know a day away from there. There's definitely something going on. Yeah. And how much of it is? I mean, have there, have there been moments where you've genuinely been exhilarated and thought this is just incredible? Um, yeah. And what would they be? Uh, standing on the edge of a, a live volcano. Really? That's pretty oh. pretty mad. Scary. But I was like, this, I never, th how did this happen? Do you know what I mean? Is, and is, and it's is, loud. Can you feel the heat? Yeah. So it's a bit like w opening the door of the aeroplane when you get off at Torremolinos. Or opening an oven. Yeah, it's literally like that. <sighs> it's, it's, it proper like hits you and shock waves, you sort of see stuff move. Because it's like, <laughs> and the power... Just sh you sort of see all the soil and ash yeah. and that sort of moving towards you. The earth changing. You think, under what you, am yeah. I doing? <laughs> what what am I doing stood here? Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I, it's just really dangerous. I don't tell Suzanne because I know she'd be worried sick. But some of the things they, they put me in, I don't think Ricky understands. Yeah. The danger in the da which you. Uh, yeah, operate. a live hook. You're messing about with nature there. Well, you, no matter what health and safety you do, <laughs> that you can't avoid. If that goes off, you're dead. There was a big basically. lump, honestly, about the size of a. Volkswagen Golf that just flew out and landed like 15 <laughs> foot away from me. That's <laughs> really terrifying. But amazing. So at the time I don't enjoy it. Yeah. With, uh, with a trip where, you know, I was meant to be swimming with dolphins, they changed it last minute, I got there, it was sharks. Oh, right? that's different. But, as much as I was annoyed, how many people have done that? Not, Do you know well, what I mean? the, how many people have? D a lot of people have done it, but usually they come out in three or four bits, don't they? Yeah. So, you, you, how, what kind of sharks were they? In? Great white. Did you go in a, in, a, in a cage? In a cage, yeah, but it doesn't mean anything. That the gaps in these cages, honestly, it's like it, it, I'd be better off in a shopping trolley <laughs> on a bit of rope. There's big holes in it, and they could easily get in. But the bloke's going no, and it is a, it is a good thing. The bloke who was on the boat, his name's uh, Rodney. He um. He worked on Jaws. Wow. And he was saying how, um... What's his name, the uh, bloke? Was it Roy Scheider who was the, the main guy? Or is it... Is it Dr Dreyfus? Oh, Richard Dreyfus, yeah. Which one was he? He was the sort of young guy with the beard and the glasses, the scientist. Who's the one who's... Who's the main man? That is Scheider. Right. He's called Brody. Right, all right. Got that. Well, him... Because they were using a real great white... And they, I, I can't remember. I should watch it again, really. But um, we'll put the music saying, in under this to, to make to make the shark look bigger. Yeah, they got a dwarf to play him. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah, I've never heard no. that. I've never heard that. But he said, "Yeah, that's what was going on." And and the dwarf, you know what dwarfs are like. He's not. They, they love taking the work on, don't they? Any work that comes up. And he got there, and they said to the dwarf, "Right, so you're getting in, and shark." He's going what? And he actually panicked and disappeared for a bit because he didn't want to get in. Sadly. So all that was going on when George. That's incredible. Made. It's good, isn't it? So it was a, a person of restricted height was pretending to be Roy Scheider just to make the shark look bigger. That's ridiculous. So yeah, that's what Rod Rodney Fox. I don't think anybody's ever heard that before. That's a, that's a genuine. Yeah, it's not a even, genuine not first. Even in the program that it's just something he told me when when he was dunking me in. What was the worst thing that you were made to eat whilst you were at there? Because that's another feature of the program, an idiot abroad, that I've you're got, made to eat horrible stuff. I've got better at that. They you gag try less. Harder, gag less. I'm pretty good at sort of. Uh, it's all in your mind, isn't it? I was kind of on your mouth, mind awesome. over matter, just sort of right. I'm going to shove this in and not think about it. And I ate geckos yeah. and all that. Um, but in Japan, Japan's the worst place for food. Kind of eat, have a go at anything, won't they? they, they I don't know what the rules are. <laughs> you, you don't need to go hungry there. There's just just eat anything. Uh, a great sum up about Carl comes from uh, uh, Pilkypedia. It was Carl himself who best summed up his worldview. I don't like fun. He's not a fan of holidays, parties, travelling or anything that has to be planned in advance. Maintaining relationships with family and friends is a tremendous hassle for him. He is also largely indifferent to some of life's great pleasures, like sex and music. Pilkypedia, that. I mean, on, I like music. <laughs> the discos and all that. I don't, I don't know where this stuff comes from. Are you, are you, are you not a custodian of Pilkypedia? No. Ah, oh, well, let's see. Well, it's spurious, then. It's spurious. Unlike An Idiot Abroad 2, which is going to be out... On Sky, 
Sky One, Friday nights, nine o'clock. It seems it would be idiotic to miss it, really, uh, because... At uh, least watch one. Yeah, watch, don't, maybe not watch them all, but watch eight, one. Just watch one, see if you <laughs> like it. It's honestly, and if, it's, it's, it looks amazing. They've, just, they've spent money on it, they've shot it, it looks, nicely. Yeah, they had, like, helicopters out and everything, Bloody and hell. it looks amazing. If you watched it with the sound down, you'd think it was Attenborough. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not. I, it's worth seeing it just for just seeing the world in like HD. It looks really, really good. And I, you know what I'm like. I'm not. You know, don't come in here and sort of light yeah. and make stuff. It's, it's wow. It looks good. I yeah. love the idea of you as David Attenborough. You know, there's a shot of a of a sort of ant colony or something like that. And instead of instead oh, wow. of David Attenborough, it would just be you going. It's all right. That's yeah. the ideal gig. I, I, I came face to face with gorillas in Uganda. What What did you make of that? It's a good moment, but it's that sort of gig. It's yeah. that sort of gig that yeah. I'd like to do. I wonder what they thought. That's what I'd like to know. Carl Pilkington, a pleasure and a privilege. Let's do it again sometime. Thanks a lot.